Oh, they want to know about the data science degree. Oh, they want to know. And today I am going to tell you. You want to know what's in a data science degree by somebody who did one? Well, you're in the right position because I am currently a data science and AI student. You might be in the same position I was a year ago, trying to decide whether to study data science, whether to go self-taught, do a boot camp, or do a degree. And a degree is a lot of money, so it would be nice if you knew what was coming your way before you actually started one. To help you decide whether you actually want to do that, or just do self-taught and learn the same general concepts. So today, I will go through everything I did in my data science degree. For each module, I'm going to tell you a few things for example how hard it is in my opinion how much math was involved how much coding was involved and because I know some of you are nosy I'm even gonna tell you my grades and I think I'm a decent source to gauge how difficult things are because I'm not a coding prodigy or anything like that I'm just a regular student with good work ethic so you can kind of gauge it for yourself where you would fall compared to that the the first module is research methods, which is pretty straightforward, and I think every degree has this. It's very basic, it's just making sure that you know how to research, determine what a credible source is, how to reference and that kind of thing. It's honestly super straightforward, not much to report. The final grade for this module was made up of a group paper, a group presentation, and an exam. On the coding front, we didn't have to do any coding. On the math front, no math, and on the difficulty, it was pretty low and for this one I did get the highest grade available. Just a quick side note on the UK grading system for a master's there's three different grades basically one is just above 50 which is a pass then you have a merit which is slightly higher and then you have a distinction which is the highest possible and obviously you have a fail. Up next AI and communication. This one was completely different to anything else we did because it was much more on the AI side but it was very content heavy. So the main goal of this module was to examine how AI is used in the real world and we would have to select a top Topic from 10 different lectures that we had and have a 2,000 word essay which would count for 100% of our grade which honestly isn't that bad okay so the amount of coding you do depends on what topic you pick to do your report on so for example if you did a Twitter sentiment analysis that would have a lot more coding but mine was much more content based because I wanted a break from staying up at 3 a.m. in the library trying to figure out which comma I need to move in my code so that it stops giving me a middle finger so instead I did a content based report examining the viability of the more machine to help make decisions on what ethics an autonomous car should have in the event of a crash. It's interesting, I promise you, I promise you. I'll leave a link down below, do the test, it's interesting, I love it. So, this module had minimal math, a variable amount of coding, again depending on what you pick, and in terms of difficulty it was pretty low, but I did only get the second highest grade available. Next is maths and stats. Maths, maths, maths. How much maths do I need to know for data science? It's the eternal question, really. And I haven't done maths this complicated, I think, since A-level. So if you did okay at your A-level maths, you should be fine. And if you did maths for your undergrad, you're gonna breeze through this. The main topics covered were set theory, which is, come on, it's pretty basic, and it does translate well to a lot of data science concepts. Probability was also a big element, but off the top of my head, you have limit, gradient descent was also big, as, as well as linear algebra and subcalculus. For grading, we had four pieces of coursework, which were worth 10% each, which was pretty annoying because they were pretty hard for 10% each. And then we had the final exam, which was worth 60%. For this, there was a maximal amount of maths required, a low to manageable amount of coding required, and for difficulty, I would say it was difficult, but not impossible. And for this module, I did get the highest grade available. Now, onto database and information systems. This was an interesting module. The content itself wasn't that difficult, but we had a stand-in teacher, because our regular teacher was on maternity leave, so it was a little bit all over the place. But this module is all about managing databases and creating strong databases with good referential integrity. So this involves a lot of ER diagrams, as well as relational algebra, which was completely foreign to me, but not bad. And on the coding side of things, it's pretty heavy on the SQL, but no Python and no R was involved for this one. So in SQL, we had to learn how to create databases with the foreign keys and all those constraints, as well as how to query them and create views. And before this degree, I actually spent a year self-teaching SQL using DataCamp, and I will be doing a video comparing what those two experiences are like on the self-taught versus degree side, so stay tuned if you want to check that out. But anyway, it meant that I got a handle of SQL relatively quickly, so I did manage to get the highest grade available for this module. There was a medium level of coding required, because it wasn't all SQL stuff. There was some a lot of theory stuff. And on the math side, it was medium. 
if you consider relational algebra to be mapped. And the overall difficulty of the module, I'll say, was on the low end. The assessment structure was three pieces of coursework and then a final exam. Next up is Applied AI. And I really enjoyed this module because it was the closest to being an actual data scientist. So we learned a bunch of different topics from predicting house prices, using logistic regression, uh, diabetes detection, and even some image recognition to determine who has COVID, as well as image recognition, for example, determining how healthy somebody's lungs were. So there was a, a lot of convolutional networks involved in this. So for this, we had three assignments and all of them you had to work in pairs, which is pretty true to life as you might probably be working in teams. You could essentially use any library and any method you wanted to come to a solution as well. And you'll see later that this wasn't always the case. On the coding scale, this was extremely coding heavy and it was basically all code, so that gets the highest score. There was a low level of math required. And on the difficulty scale, this is a tough one because it was easy enough to get over 50%, but it was much harder to get a high, high grade on this. So it's hard to determine. And it also depends on who your partner was. Um, mine was a genius, so that kind of helped things. And for this module, I did manage to get the highest score possible. Okay, we're over the hump. Now into the proper sticky module. Programming fundamentals. <sighs> This is the one, this is the one module that for a 31 hour period had me considering, is this degree really right for me? Should I drop out? Ah, uh, I remember. Anyway, programming fundamentals sounds simple enough, but it was our first programming intense module, so it was a bit of a shock. I had done a data camp course in Python for data scientists before, so I walked in with a lot of confidence, being like, yeah, I'll be fine with this, but this was a completely different level. All of this was in Python, but the thing is, we weren't allowed to use any library, so it wasn't really about learning how to use libraries and how you would use it in real life, but more about how to think programmatically, so we had to learn the very basics, very very well. And in terms of difficulty for somebody like me who didn't have a background in coding, I'll say the difficulty was comfortably a 5 out of 5. In terms of math, you didn't really need any math really, so it was low level. And for the assessment, it was just three different pieces of coursework, and I did manage to get the second highest grade available, but pff, yeah, that was tough. <laughs> right, the last two, the two hardest modules that I had. And this first one snuck up on me. It is data mining and visualization. Okay, the name sounds simple enough. You're like, oh, visualizations, you know. Get a bit of matplotlib going, some seaborn, you know, but it was a lot trickier than that. It was a pure combination of maths and programming. So for the assessment, there was one exam and two pieces of coursework. The exam was essentially a maths exam. Not essentially, it was a maths exam. To be fair, after getting your head around the maths, it's not the hardest maths, but it's just a lot to remember. For the math, there was a lot of classifier evaluation, loss function minimization calculations, probability, logistic regression, clustering, association pattern mining and I think that's all I know off the top of my head so I'll say ETC at this point and the assignments were both programming heavy like designing your own k-means algorithm as well as a perceptron classifier and both of these were with minimal use of libraries so you kind of had to know your stuff stack overflow and in the library but eventually I did manage to get there and on the difficulty scale I'd rank it extremely high the math side also extremely high off the charts and extremely high programming content as well, obviously. And for this module, I did manage to get the highest grade available. The last one is the big boy, computational intelligence. The annoying part is that this was an optional module and it's on the AI side, which I'm less interested in. So I could have avoided this, but once I picked it, I decided to look at it as a challenge and go headfirst towards it. The module was split into two, with the first part of the module being understanding neural networks at their base level. And this included a fair bit of maths and proofs and understanding of formulae. The second half, which was my favorite part, involved genetic algorithms, which I'd never heard of before. I started this module, but yeah, they're pretty cool. Although to be fair, they are quite abstract. I would say actually doing the math was a very small part of the module, but understanding the formulae behind the math and the proofs was a large part. So depending on how you look at that, I would say the math content is high. The actual programming is low, but you have to be able to understand a lot of concepts programmatically. So again, depending on how you look at it, I would still say the programming is high. But it was mainly a content module. The overall difficulty for this module is quite high, and most people would probably agree, but I did manage to get the highest grade somehow. And lastly, the dissertation. 
oh wait, I didn't have to do the dissertation. This is because this master's has two paths. You can do your first year of learning, go on to do your dissertation and graduate, or you can do what I did, where you do the first year of learning, accept the dissertation, then do a year in industry instead. And that's what I did. So I've actually just moved to the city and I'm starting my internship two days from now. So I'll be letting you guys know how that goes. And the reason I chose that is because I really wanted some hands-on experience in an internship role. So my degree is actually technically two years long. So yeah, that's it. Leave any questions below and I'll get to them. But yeah, that's it for this one. Peace.